Hello everyone, how are you? Am I audible? Am I audible, dear? Yes, I am audible. Yeah. Let's see what are we discussing in the previous class. What are we discussing in the previous class, dear? Please let me know. Also, I'm not sure. I had connectivity issues last class. Conduction part is finished. Now, we will be talking about the nervous system. Okay. We will be talking about the human nervous system. Subdivision of that first. Is the screen visible? The nerve conduction uh, process. Yes. The screen is visible now. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Your nervous system first see the organization. We'll talk about human nervous system. Let's see. Human nervous system. Human nervous system. What's that? It is divided into two principal parts. Okay. One is the central nervous system. Nervous system. And another is peripheral. nervous system agreed one is central nervous system another is peripheral nervous system see your central nervous system is going to be going to have brain and a spinal cord I will see, say over here, consists of, let's see, I will say, it consists of, of brain and a spinal cord. Agreed, dear? Agreed, everybody? Everybody? It consists of of twelve pairs of cranial nerves and thirty one pairs of spinal nerves yes or no yes or no yes sir it will talk about cranial nerves what are cranial nerves cranial nerves originate from from which point tell me from brain from brain. 
okay and as far as, far as the spinal nerve is concerned it is going to originate from the spinal nerve originate from a spinal cord agree originate from a spinal cord read here now peripheral nervous system is again divided into two sections one is one is what one is somatic nervous system one is somatic nervous system another is autonomic nervous system agreed one is somatic nervous system another is autonomic nervous system agreed yes sir then somatic nervous system is going to supply your somatic tissue or skeletal muscles it supplies the skeletal muscles okay autonomic nervous system is going to supply it supplies visceral organ then noises noises autonomic nervous system is further divided into is further divided into autonomic autonomic nervous system is further divided into what the parasympathetic system nervous system and sympathetic nervous system agreed everyone yes sir nervous system and sympathetic nervous system usually they they act antagonistically means they usually they have opposite functions Read dear, please write down. Oh, excuse me, sir. Yes. So the nodal tissue of the heart does it come under either of these systems? Nodal tissue is a muscular tissue, dear. Got it, sir. That is not nervous tissue at all. They are supplied by these systems. Okay. These system can moderate or mediate uh, the activity of nodal tissue, but nodal tissue is not direct. That is why our heart is myogenic, not neurogenic. Yes or no? Yes. Nervous system do not have direct control on your heart.
so sir uh, the both the sympathetic and parasympathetic moderate the functions of nodal tissue right yes sympathetic will increase the heart rate parasympathetic will decrease it yes sir got it done so everyone done we will talk about brain now we will talk about brain now let's see we will talk about brain now let's see there are following there are following embryo embryological structure there are following embryological structure that is going to form the brain one is trojan cephalon just a minute one is trojan cephalon is it visible blue color over here yes sir mesens cephalon and rhomban cephalon agree dear it is like this just yes trojan cephalon is going to develop into trojan cephalon is going to develop into four brain Median cephalon is going to develop into mid brain, and rhomban cephalon is going to develop into myelin cephalon and median cephalon. Under myelin cephalon, medulla oblongata is there, and under median median cephalon, pons and cerebellum is there. Okay, you first write down this thing. Okay, brain. There are three embryological structure from which brain is going to be formed. One is trojan cephalon, then median cephalon, then rhomban cephalon. Agree, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Agree, dear. Agree, dear. Done, everyone. So just a minute. Yes, yes, no issue.
answer. Done. No issues. Top deco better. The thing is, see, I will talk about cranial capacity. Crow magnon main having a cranial capacity of sixteen hundred fifty cc cubic centimeter, and modern men having fourteen hundred fifty cc. What do you think? More cranial capacity means more intelligence. Can you say that crow magnon man is more intelligent the uh, more intelligent than the modern man? Can you say that? Yes, Can you say that? It is not there. Actually, cranial capacity is more. What happened in uh, what happened in modern man? The brain is thrown into these kind of folds. This is known as sulcus. And gyrus. This is helping in accommodating more number of neurons. This is helping in accommodating more number of number of neurons in lesser space. Yes or no? Because of more sulcus and gyrus, it helps to accommodate more and more number of neurons. More is the sulcus and gyrus. More is the IQ of that person. Agree, dear? Yes, sir. Okay, I have cut the brain from the center, from the uh, you can say middle, and I am able to see only one half of the brain. This is the left half. Yes or no? You can see this thing. This thing. Can you see this thing? Just give me a minute. I am taking. Uh, I am trying to take this file at the original position. Okay. In this app, I am not on, uh, able to write in a manner I want to write. Just a minute. Let's see. Can you see over here now? Can you see over here now? Here now? This area? This structure? We all can see this thing now. This is corpus callosum. What? Corpus callosum. It connects the two. Cerebral hemisphere. It connects the two cerebral hemisphere. It is the largest commissar of the brain. What is the meaning of commissar? Commissar means a structure which which connects one side to another. Agree, dear? Agree? Yes. This is corpus callosum. Okay. This is the anterior part of the corpus callosum, known as Genu, and the posterior part is known as splenium. What? Splenium. Okay. The anterior part of the corpus callosum is known as genu, and the posterior part is known as splenium. Getting my point? So it is there. Getting my point? Here, four brain is divided into two parts. <coughs> Sorry, one is telencephalon and one is diencephalon. Getting my point? Telencephalon consists of cerebral cortex, corpus striatum, hippocampus, and amygdala. And diencephalon consists of epithalamus, thalamus, and hypothalamus. Yes or no? Four brain consists of telencephalon. Which is having cerebral cortex, corpus striatum, hippocampus, amygdala, and diencephalon having epithalamus, thalamus, and hypothalamus. Agreed, dear? Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. Clear mesencephalon. Mesencephalon. Here is the midbrain. 
I'm going to tell you mid -grain in the next diagram. Agreed? So I am talking about now you see whole brain. Whole brain mainly consists of cerebrum and diencephalo. Getting my point? Cerebrum consists of two hemisphere known as cerebral hemisphere. No issues. The two cerebral hemisphere are connected to each other with the help of corpus callosum. That thing I have written over here. It is the tract of nerve fiber. Tract means a pathway. Its anterior part is known as genome and its posterior part is known as splenium. Now is it all right? Tell me, dear. Yes. Yes, you can write. Then everyone? Yes, sir. Deco. Now, cerebral cortex. It is the outer part of the cerebrum. Can you people imagine a watermelon? Have you seen that? Watermelon? Yes, sir. What is there in the outer part? The whitest portion that we cut and throw. Yes or no? And we used to eat reddish part. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Without cutting, if you will see the watermelon from all the side, will you be able to see the, uh, see the red part? Will you be the will you be people able to see the red part without cutting it? No, sir. No. Similar is the case of similar is the case of what? The brain, sir. Brain. Similar is the case of brain. It is wrapped all around from the by the cerebral cortex. So you will see cerebral cortex from the from all the side. If you have to see the inner structure, you have to remove the cerebral cortex. Yes or no? Yes. Getting my point? You will see the outer, it is the outer part of the cerebrum. Thickness is only two to four millimeters. Consists of six layers of neuron and around 10 billion Pyramidal, spindle, stellate neurons are there. They are based on the shape only. Nothing special in this. You will see it is divided into lobes. See, a big sulcus over here known as central sulcus. What? Central sulcus. Divide it into frontal lobe and parietal lobe. And one sulcus is parieto occipital. Sulcus means depression not here. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. parieto occipital. It is going to divide it into, it is present between the parietal lobe, 
and the occipital lobe. Agreed? And here is the lateral sulcus. What? Lateral sulcus. Agreed? Lateral sulcus is going to be present between the frontal, parietal, and the temporal lobe. So, how many lobes are there? The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. Yes or no? Yes or no? Tell me, dear. Yes, sir. Yes. See, this is the this is the central sulcus. If you will see, see, this is the this is a deep central sulcus. No issues. So, so there are certain areas that is there in your brain. There are certain areas that is there in the brain just in front of the central sulcus. You are going to get. The primary motor area. What? Primary motor area. And behind the central circus, it is the primary sensory area. Agreed? Primary motor area and primary sensory area. Agreed? Yes, sir. Agreed? Agreed? Yes, sir. What is the what is the what is the you can say function of primary motor area? All your general motor activity like walking and all. You keep on hearing, na? Uh, cerebellum is going to have role in cerebellum, the uh, in the hind brain. It is going to have role in uh, equilibrium or balancing. Is it like that? Yes, sir. What will happen if your primary motor area will be affected? And what will happen if cerebellum is going to be affected? Have you seen a drunk person walking? Oh, yes, sir. Have you seen? Is that person not able to walk or that person is not walking properly. So not walking properly. Not walking properly, my dear. Tell me. But he is able to walk. In that case, what do you think? Primary motor area is affected or cerebellum is affected? If a person is not Yes, if a person is not able to maintain the balance, in that case, you should understand that. You should understand that that person, the person's sorry, cerebellum is affected. If primary motor area will be affected, no? paralysis will be there. Person will not be able to move the limbs. Yes or no? So have you yes. understand difference between the role of primary motor area and cerebellum while walking? Yes, sir. Yes. In front of primary motor area is pre-motor area. It is going to help you in motor planning. Motor planning. Agreed, dear? Yes, sir. Agreed? Agreed? So frontal lobe is going to have primary motor area and pre-motor area. Yes or no? Like you are running and you have to change your, uh, you can say direction, or you have to you have to do, uh, change from any uh, present condition. Okay, planning for that is going to be started in premotor area because without planning you are not going to do anything. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Agreed. No issues. No yes, issues. Let's see, dear. Let's see, dear. What I wanted to tell you all. Premotor area is over. Now, what is behind the central sulcus? The primary sensory area. You have two kinds of senses. One is general sense. One is general sense. 
Yes or no? Another is a special senses. A special senses is like visual sense and all. Yes or no? Visual yes, sense and all. Agreed, dear? So you see, vision is also a sense only. It is there in the occipital area. Where? It is there in the occipital area. Occipital lobe. Yes or no? Occipital lobe. Noises? Noises, dear? Yes. Noises? But general senses like touch, pressure, and all, pain, that will be analyzed by primary sensory area. Have you understood role of primary motor area and primary sensory area? One more is an uh, area that is uh, of a special sense is here you will see here if you will see this is the auditory area. It is responsible for your it is responsible for your sense of you can say hearing. Yes or no? Nerves are going to take the impulse to this area only and here only it will be analyzed. Here only it will be analyzed. Agreed, dear? Tell me. Yes, sir. No issues? No issues? No, here sir. is the Broca's area. Broca's area is the motor speech area. All the motor activity of all the motor activity of your speech is going to be controlled by Broca's area. And Wernick's area is the sensory speech area. Agreed? No issues. Sensory speech area. What you people are speaking, you are going to have sense of that thing also. Yes or no? If I am speaking something that I know what I am speaking. If Broca's area will, will be affected, in that case, what will happen? The motor function of a speech will be lost. And what will happen if Wernick's area is affected? You will not be able to analyze what you are speaking. Yes or no? Understood? Yes. Sir. yes. Uh, so, sir, if Broca's area is affected, you'll be able to understand what the other person is speaking. You be, yes. Actually, see what other person is speaking. That is. A, for that your ear is, is ear is responsible. Yes, yes sir, or no? Uh, uh, that is the that, See, two things are there. One thing is you are understanding somebody else's speaking. For that ear and auditory area is responsible. Yes or no? No role of Broca's area or Wernick's area is there in that. Yes or no? Yes. It is there like you have to speak, you have to perform motor activity, you have to move your tongue and all. For that Broca's area is there. And what you are speaking, that also you, you can say, you need to understand, no? You used to understand that thing, what you are speaking. Are you are not, yes, you do not understand. So for that, what is there? Broca's area. Yeah, yeah sorry, uh, Wernick's area. Agree, dear? Uh, so, sir, Wernick's area is not responsible for understanding what the other person is speaking. Other, for other person, for uh, what other person is speaking, for that auditory area is there. Yes, got it. So just a minute, could we copy the diagram? Yes, you can copy this also. Yes, sir. So the motor areas are for um, processing whatever we've sensed and sensory areas, uh, ju they just pick up the stimuli, right? Yes, what are you saying? Sir, the motor area processes the uh, senses that we have got, like the everything, uh, whatever we, we can sense in the stimulus. And the sensory areas, they just pick the stimulus and send it to the brain, See, right? A, a stimulus is what? Like anything that is starting from your peripheral organ. Okay, that has to go to brain. Brain can analyze that. Brain will send 
motor signal according to that one. Okay, so you are your limbs are moving, you, uh, uh, and all the motor activity will be performed by primary motor area. Okay, the voluntary motor activity, voluntary that that is under control of your will. Sensory area is for many senses are there, no? That will be analyzed over there. Agree? Yes, sir. So is that uh, structure before the lateral sulcus also a sulcus or is that an arrow? Uh -huh. So the How line, the white line before the lateral sulcus between the occipital lobe and the lateral sulcus, is that yes, also a that sulcus? Is, that is a sulcus only, yes. Depression. Yes, sir. Got it. <laughs> Done, everyone. So, just a minute.
So, uh, could you repeat the functions of Vernix and Broca's area again? Vernix area is there for interpret what you speak. Or you can say sensory part of your speaking. Okay, and Broca's area is there for motor part of your. You can say what you are speaking. Getting my point? Like your tongue movement and all are there, and that will be controlled by Broca's area. And Wernick area is going to control your uh, sensory speech problem. Okay, yes. like if Wernick Wernick area will be affected, na what you are speaking, you are not going to interpret that at all. Yes, sir. Got it. Yes. Done. Yes, sir. Done. Now, cerebral cortex having three types of areas. One is primary sensory area, second is primary motor area, and third is association area. Primary sensory, primary motor. We have discussed. Let's see, you have many senses, like you have sense of hearing. Sense of, you can say, vision is there. Many senses are there. There must be coordination between them. Yes or no? There must be coordination between them. What I want to say? Say, please see to it. Like, like, if you, if you do not have, getting my point? Please mind my words. Like somebody is scary for your eyes. And that is present for your ear. What kind of action you are going to take? Will you be able to take any action? Whether you are going to listen to your eyes or ears? That will be a complicated problem, na? No? Yes, sir. So there is communication between all your senses. Whatever eyes thinking, that will be communicated to. You can say sense of eyes there. the similar sense should be there for other sensory structures also okay so they are communicate you can say connected so association area is neither clearly motor nor clearly sensory its function are functions are intersensory association memory and communication three functions are there it is important this thing you people should write down okay Several cortex have in three types of area. Either it is primary sensory area, or it is, or it is primary motor area, or it is association area. Yes or no, dear? Done. Everyone. Yes, sir. Answer. Done, everyone. Dian Seplon. Can you people imagine your rooms? Rooms are there, na? It is having a roof. It is having walls and it is having floor. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Similar structure is there in the brain. 
that structure is third ventricle what this area is third ventricle its roof is epithalamus this part is epithalamus okay this part is hypothalamus this is the floor and all the walls these walls lateral walls are what thalamus agreed dear agreed tell me yes sir yes sir the lateral wall is thalamus the upper wall wall is epithalamus okay and the lower wall is hypothalamus lower part is hypothalamus yes or no so third ventricle is a structure its roof is epithalamus yes or no its wall is thalamus and what a structure is hypothalamus agree dear what a structure is hypothalamus that is the that is situated in the base of the third ventricle to which pituitary gland is also connected agreed or not yes sir agreed or not everyone see epithalamus consists of epithalamus consists of pineal body pineal body or gland plus habenula 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 is a stalk like structure only structure only Venula is a stalk like a structure only. Getting my point? To which pineal body is connected? Okay. Pineal body is an endocrine gland. It secretes a hormone known as melatonin. Agreed, dear? Thalamus acts as relay center. What? Relay center. How? Try to understand my point. If you are going to, um, uh, you can say, going for uh, electrical wiring in your room, are you taking wires? Through the wall or uh, through the uh, you can say between the rooms only. From which area you are going to run? Through walls, na? Yes. Sir. Through walls, na? Similar kind of thing is there. Anything that is going up, going up, or coming down will go through the wall of the third ventricle. That is thalamus only, na? That is thalamus only. Oh, so could you repeat that i told anything that is going up to the cord cerebral cortex or coming down that will go through the wall only not through the ventricle yes sir yes and what is the what is the wall wall mm -hmm. is thalamus in that way that way only thalamus is acting as a relay center all the sensory stimulus coming from peripheral sense organ and motor signal arising from the cerebral cortex pass through thalamus agreed dear tell me yes sir hypothalamus what is hypothalamus it is situated in the base of third ventricle it is situated in the base of third ventricle agreed function it acts as thermostat hunger center thirst center sexual drive and it is having endocrine functions also you people know that it is going to control the pituitary gland yes or no everyone yes sir that is hypothalamus please write it down that is a hypothalamus please write it down and come back in a minute i'm coming back in a minute
Yes, everyone. Are you done? So just a minute. Yeah. येलो कलर का लेना Done, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, next thing is limbic system. Actually, as I have told you, the example of watermelon that is a you can say analogy only, not exactly. If you will remove the white part, that you consider that white part as cerebral cortex. So, if you will go down. Go down into the, you can say below the cerebral cortex, you are going to find subcortical area. What? Subcortical area. In that, there are many groups of nucleus. Groups of nucleus. What is nucleus? Nucleus is collection of cell body. into the cns or in the cns okay that is nucleus only these are the nucleus that are there agreed dear everyone agreed everyone yes sir there are amygdala hippocampus etc you see this is amygdala okay and just give me a minute here the important call is there just a minute Yes, everyone. 
can you see if you consider this as a tuning fork you can see hippocampus is at the base yes or no this is a tuning fork na if this is the tuning fork hippocampus is at the base yes or no am i audible yes sir yes so they are there that is the part of or you can say limbic system limbic system amygdala is you can say um, it is more responsible for the emotional thing for anger or rage etc and hippocampus is going to convert short term memory into long term memory yes or no hippocampus is going to convert short term memory into long term memory agreed dear agree everyone tell me yes sir tell me then so you people can write this thing limbic system especially amygdala along with limbic system along with uh, hypothalamus regulates sexual behavior emotional reaction and motivation agree dear everyone done just a minute sir Done, done, everyone. Now the midbrain. Everyone, are you done, dear? Are 
are you done please let me know here the mid brain this is the posterior part of your brain this is the posterior part of your brain can you see four round swelling over here 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 and here can you see that yes sir yes sir that is known as corpora quadrigemina why the word quadri is used because it is four swelling the upper two is known as superior colliculi and the lower two is known as inferior colliculi yes or no dear superior colliculi is for visual reflex and for hearing reflex or acoustic reflex inferior colliculi is there agreed tell me yes or no for yes, visual sir. reflex superior colliculi is there and for acoustic reflex inferior colliculi is there agree say yes or no yes yes mid brain is there it is consisting of four round swelling the corpora quadrigemina okay out of that the superior two is known as superior colliculi and inferior two is known as inferior colliculi it is there for visual reflex and acoustic reflex acoustic means hearing reflex you all can see with your eyes Answer. Then here, this is superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. This is your mid brain. Regarding hind brain, we have read most of the things. Okay, we have read most of the things. Like, see over here. Pons means bridge. Bridge. It connects cerebral cortex to cerebellum. It acts. bridge between them getting my point and it connects other part of the brain also it is having pneumotaxic center and apneustic center that we have read in regulation of respiration yes or no yes or no pneumotaxic center and apneustic center we have read in regulation of respiration both of these centers are responsible for regulation of respiration agreed everyone tell so, me uh, could you just tell the function of apneustic center again apneustic for center is there for it prolongs it prolongs inspiration if it will keep on working it will increase the duration of inspiration agreed yes sir got it yes hind brain in hind brain the medulla oblongata part is going to have respiratory rhythm center cardiovascular system the vomit center and it is the seat of your involuntary activity vomiting is also known as amesis hence the another name of vomit center is amatic center also agreed dear yes cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain it is made up of two cerebral hemisphere and it is most affected part by alcohol so once after alcohol intake gait or pattern of walking is going to be disturbed this gait is gait it do not initiate movement but helps in coordination of movement getting a point 
movement is going to be initiated by which part? <laughs> movement Primary is going motor to... center. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Right. So, yes. So, what is the pneumotoxic center do? Pneumotoxic center is going to reduce the duration of inspiration and expiration as well. What it will do? It will deteriorate but decrease the duration. Agreed? Yes, sir.
done sir done given now one thing is there one thing is there let's see over here the cerebellum is consisting of like you are cutting you are cutting it from here here and watching it from this side because cerebellum is also going to be consisting of two lobes so let's see over here two lobes it will be divided into following lobes these are known as lateral lobes the central part is known as vermis and the these two are flocular lobes see this structure that is there it is it represents a junction of white matter and gray matter okay so this structure is known as arbor vitae okay and if you will see over here if you will see over here you all can see cerebellum is connected to different part of brain by cerebellar peduncle this is the superior cerebellar peduncle what superior cerebellar peduncle this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle and this is the middle cerebellar peduncle can you see the superior cerebellar peduncle is connecting the cerebellum to which part of the brain the superior cerebellar peduncle is going to connect the brain and uh, is going to connect to which part of the brain hypothalamus is it mid brain yes sir middle one is going to connect it to the pons and the inferior one is going to connect it to the medulla oblongata so this thing is written over here only getting my point that's all about the parts of the brain so uh, could you show mm -hmm. the arbor vitae in the diagram above like is it visible this one this blue line so is it uh, visible in the brain diagram no it is not visible over here let's see let me check over here yes sir let me check over here. actually it is going to be shown in okay see you can observe a bit over here in this view you will be able to see like that only okay yes, i sir. have seen in this view yes sir got it
on just a minute sir done everyone so just a minute so labeling Answer. Done, everyone. Let's see here. Let's see what I wanted to tell you all. Ventricle sobri. Ventricle sobri. Ventricle sobri. Let's see. Can you understand which section is this? Which section is this? this section passes from year one year to another year okay getting my point the plane which is cutting or you can say frontal section is there okay not understood understood sir see i am cutting the brain i am cutting the brain from here and watching it from this side agree agree dear yes sir you are going to get this kind of structure this kind of structure okay see over here see over here before going into vent ventricles we should be doing covering of brain also covering of brain just a minute yes then we will understand the complete can you see over here covering yes. of brain that is known as meninges what meninges i am moving it to some other app this app it is not let's see let's see our important structures covering our brain why i am teaching it over here because it is connected to the topic ventricles of the brain you see the covering of brain is known as meninges yes or no what meninges of brain agreed no issues it is known as meninges of brain agreed 
it is there are three meninges dura mater arachnoid and pia mater dura mater the arachnoid membrane and the and the pia mater yes or no yes sir dura mater is two dura mater is two one is the outer one and one is the inner one outer one is known as outer one is known as parietal dura mater which is going to fuse to cranial bones and inner one is known as visceral dura mater which is going to fuse to brain you can say arachnoid membrane agree dear everyone everyone inflammation of meninges is known as meningitis what inflammation of meninges you keep on hearing na meningitis had happened that is what that is inflammation of meninges it tear that is inflammation of meninges that is meningitis agreed everyone now you see now you see dura mater this white structure is the cranial bone yes or no cranial bone this white structure everyone and attached to it a yellow structure or orange structure that is the parietal dura mater and this blue one is known as visceral dura mater agreed visceral dura mater and the parietal dura mater and visceral dura mater is fused everywhere the parietal dura mater and the visceral dura mater fused everywhere except at places that is known as venous sinuses that is known as venous sinuses agreed dear yes sir agreed that is known as venous sinuses no issues now below that this red structure is there known as arachnoid membrane can you observe arachnoid membrane and below arachnoid membrane is a, pi, a structure that is known as pia mater this yellow structure and pia mater is situated just outside the brain yes or no this is brain tissue can read everyone do you people agree say yes, yes or no yes say sir. yes or no yes you people agree to this so this is the pia mater and the brain tissue agreed now can you see arachnoid membrane is folded in front of venous sinus that is known as arachnoid villi what that is known as arachnoid villi yes or no yes arachnoid membrane is fused is forming a finger like proje projection in front of venous sinus that is known as what arachnoid villi agreed dear yes sir everyone yes sir agreed everyone so this is there and one thing till meninges is involved it is meningitis once the brain tissue will be involved it will it will become encephalitis once the brain tissue will be involved it will become encephalitis agree dear tell me yes sir no issues no issues so you people can write down all these definitions now what is the name of a space that is present between the present below the dura mater dura mater it is known as subdural space which is space subdural space it is the space present between dura mater and arachnoid membrane it is the space present between dura mater and arachnoid membrane yes or no tell me and yes sir below the arachnoid membrane the space that is there is known as subarachnoid space the space bit present between arachnoid membrane and the pia mater it getting my point in subarachnoid space what is present cerebro spinal fluid is present agreed dear do you people agree with all my points see over here please see to it 
do you people agree with all my points or not yes sir yes sir right down because how csf is going to move in that both is going to have roles that is why i am teaching you people over here other i otherwise i would have taught in the beginning one right down.
Uh, sir, could you show the diagram for a minute? done so you can scroll down Done, everyone. Just a minute, sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute.
So could you scroll up for a second? Well done, sir. Yes, let's see here. Let's see. <clears throat> In case of brain, there is no space between parietal duramater and the cranial bones. So, epidural space is absent. Agreed? In the brain. What is there? Epidural space is absent in the brain. But in the spinal cord, it is present. Agreed? This note, can you people recognize? Can you people recognize? Yes, sir. Yes. Let's see. We'll be talking about ventricles of the brain. We'll be talking about ventricles of the brain. Let's see, dear. Ventricles of the brain. Let me take the attendance, otherwise I will forget. Otherwise I will forget, for sure. Let's see. Can you all see this thing? If you will cut the frontal section, you are going to have two way, you can say, you are going to have one hollow space inside each cerebral hemisphere. And they are known as lateral ventricles. Agreed? They are known as lateral ventricles. Here is the third ventricle. What? Third ventricle. And here is the fourth ventricle. Yes or no? Can you people understand? Yes, sir. Lateral ventricle and third ventricle. Sorry, sorry lateral ventricles and third ventricle. This is fourth ventricle. Yes or no? Here is the choroid plexus of vein. What? Choroid plexus of vein. What? What is there? Choroid plexus of vein. Agreed, dear? What is there? Choroid plexus of vein. Yes or no? From there, CSF will be formed. What? CSF will be formed. Agreed? And from the choroid plexus, CSF is coming into which ventricle? Lateral ventricle, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the lateral ventricle, it is moving, moving into third ventricle with the help of a foramen that is known as foramen of Monroe. What? Foramen of Monroe. So now it is there in the, it is there in the third ventricle. From third ventricle to fourth, vent fourth ventricle, it is coming through the cerebral aqueduct or another name is aqueduct of Sylvius. Later on it is written. So which structure is going to connect third ventricle to the fourth ventricle? Which structure is going to connect third ventricle to the fourth ventricle here? Cerebral aqueduct. Yes, Radha. It is similar. Okay, same, same covering is there for brain as well as a spinal cord. Agreed? Yes, sir. Yes. So what have I told? I told you, I told you that third ventricle and fourth ventricles are connected through which structure? Cerebral aqueduct. Here, cerebral aqueduct. Yes, you are right. It is connected through cerebral aqueduct. 
or aqueduct of Sylvius. Now you see the CSF is formed from the choroid plexus of vein. It is going to lateral ventricle. From lateral ventricle to third ventricle, it is moving through foramen of monero. Yes or no? It is moving through foramen of monero. And from third ventricle to fourth ventricle, it is moving through through the Cerebral aqueduct. Of, yes. In fourth ventricle, there are few foramens. The median foramen that is situated in the center is known as foramen of Mezendi. And two lateral foramens are known as foramen of Lucca. What? Foramen of Mezendi and foramen of Lucca. Yes or no? Through them, the CSF will escape to subarachnoid space. The CSF will escape to subarachnoid space. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And I have told you already, CSF, CSF is present inside the subarachnoid space. And at that place, arachnoid villi was there, no? Arachnoid villi, villi was there, no? Yes, yes sir. sir. That will take up that CSF and put that into cranial venous sinus. Yes or no? Cranial venous sinus. Agreed, dear? Tell me. Yes, sir. Tell me, everyone. Oh, do you so, have... so, so from the fourth ventricle, it will go to the. Subarachnoid space. It will go to subarachnoid space. From subarachnoid space, it will, be it will be taken up by arachnoid really and will be put, will be poured inside, will be poured inside venous sinus and from there it will return to the blood circulation. So CSF is getting formed from the blood only and it is returning to the blood also. Getting my point? Otherwise what will happen? It will keep on if there is any obstruction in the flow, getting my point, the CSF will keep on accumulating, will lead to increase in intracranial pressure and due to that only what will happen? A condition will develop that is known as hydrocephalus condition. Yes or no? Agree, everyone? Uh, so how is the fourth ventricle connected to the subarachnoid space? Through foramen of Mezendi and foramen of Luca. You just imagine, take a pipe, wrap two, three membranes around that. Okay, make a hole in the pipe. Getting my point? It can go to the outer space, no? So, so the foramen is a cavity in the pia mater? And yes, the, it, oh, it, will, it will pierce through pia mater also. Yes, sir. Got it. Yes. Agreed? So this is there. And you can see over here that cerebral aqueduct is passing through midbrain. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. You can draw this diagram. So with the accumulation of uh, cerebral spinal fluid, will the toxins also accumulate in the brain? Hmm? with the toxins that the fluid carries away from the brain? Will they also accumulate? Yes. No, the toxins, all the things. You, know, you cannot call that toxin. Toxin is not usually present. That is excretory matter. It is providing so, so, nutrition and taking up things from there. So, so will it cause brain damage if, the, if hydrocephaly yes. is continued? Yes, of course. Yes, sir. Got it. Sir, so hydrocephalus, there's just an increase in the intracellular pressure because of CSF, right? Yeah, what? Yes. yes. It is due to increase in intracranial pressure. Pressure inside the brain is increasing. Okay, everyone? Oh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. So I heard of a case where the cerebrospinal fluid leaked through the uh, nasal cavity of a person for many years. See, actually what happens, there may be some damage in the bones, cranial bones, or some that kind of development may have may had happened. Agree, my, agree, agree to my point? Yes, sir. That can so, be. So from where exactly does it 
travel to the nasal cavity like see, which bone actually 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 you will see na the base of cranium having many foramen having many foramen yes or no yes sir so is that does it leak through one of them or injury to the meninges is there what will happen in that case so so what are the consequences of csf leak what are the consequences they, it can lead to you can say first consequence is the csf is leaking because of actually injury is there na at any place getting my point inflammation yes, will be there getting my point If CSF is leaking, in that case, what will happen inside the brain? CSF will decrease. Yes or no? So all those things will yes. be there. Main problem that is not going to happen uh, on its own. Some injury will be there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I got it. Yes, yes. I think electricity has gone. Okay, and time for break is also there. So let us take fifteen minutes break. After that, we will start. Okay. Okay, dear. Yes, sir. Yes, it uh, it is there now. No issues. So after break, I will uh, let you write. Okay, take a break till uh, Wi-Fi starts. Yes, sir. Okay.
let's see dear are you people there everyone yes sir yes you can see this you can write it down done everyone are we done with this just a minute sir no please you write down because that is the important concept Yeah. <laughs> 
Done. So could you scroll down a bit for the points? Yes. Pathway of movement of CSF, I have written the same thing that I have told you. Okay. So could you scroll up a little bit? Done, sir.
Are you done with all these things? Sir, we are just a minute. Yes, sir. Right, you don't know this. Done, sir. That's all with brain. Now we will be moving to a spinal cord. A spinal cord. If you will see, this is the longitudinal section of a spinal cord. This is your medulla oblongata. This part is medulla oblongata, and in the base of the cranium, there is a foramen known as foramen magnum. Foramen magnum. Through that, through that only, through foramen magnum only, what happens? The spinal cord comes out and continues like this, and continues like this. Agreed, dear? Okay. The lower portion of lower portion of a spinal cord is conical and known as conus medullaris what is there known as conus medullaris and you see it is stretched by or keep in place by a fold of dura mater that is known as phylum terminal as this is fold of dura mater only so it is non nervous in a, it is a non nervous structure yes or no tell me yes sir it is a no nervous structure so you people see over here this is the structure that we are looking for so what is the function of uh, phylum terminal again 
it is just you can say keeping the spinal cord in place otherwise it will uh, it will go up and down na it is the lower attachment only it is the lower attachment only so what is it anchored to anchored to the vertebral column yes sir got it done everyone just a minute just a second sir so yes so what c1 l1 and mo c1 is first cervical vertebra mo is medulla oblongata and l1 is first lumbar vertebra understood yes sir Answer. Done, everyone. No doubt. No doubt. Let's see. This is the cross section. I have cut it at this level, and now I am watching it. See, as far as cerebral cortex is is concerned, I have already told you this thing that in the brain, cerebrum, outer part is made up of gray matter, and inner part is made up of white matter. which is opposite in case of a spinal cord yes or no the inner part the yellow color thing that is there is made up of the yellow color thing that is there that is made up of gray matter and these areas are made up of white matter these areas are made up of white matter let's see and these areas are made up of white matter agreed these areas Agreed, everyone. No doubt. Yes. Yes. No doubt in this. This thing we have already discussed. Now you see. This is known as. This is known as. This is known as the dorsal root. 
dorsal horn actually what dorsal horn and this one this side i am i am depicting this side this is known as ventral or agreed this is known as ventral or agreed dear tell me dorsal horn and ventral horn from the dorsal horn this blue color structure is arising that is known as dorsal root what dorsal root and from the ventral part the structure that is arising this is known as ventral root what ventral root agreed agreed dear the dorsal root and the ventral root yes or no yes or no yes sir yes or no now see there is a nerve fiber that is originating from a receptor entering inside the dorsal root means it is taking impulse from peripheral organ towards the spinal cord yes or no so this will be known as afferent fiber which fiber afferent afferent fiber agreed my dear getting my point dear tell me that is known as afferent fiber now you see this afferent fiber is going making a synapse synapse over here making a synapse over here in this area you can see here it is making a synapse with this red color neuron yes or no yes and please. it is it is coming through the ventral root means through ventral root the nerve fiber is coming from cns2 coming from cns2 what cns2 towards the peripheral organ yes or no yes or no tell me so one is known as dorsal root so can i say dorsal root is sensory and ventral root is motor in nature can i say that can i say that yes sir dorsal root is sensory and now see and one more fiber is there it is there for sympathetic nervous system yes or no ramus communicans is for autonomic nervous system to be precise yes or no so all the fibers of autonomic nervous system whether it is sympathetic or parasympathetic that is what whether it is sympathetic or parasympathetic that is what sympathetic or parasympathetic that is what tell me dear that is motor in motor in nature yes or no yes sir and you see if you will bundle all these nerve fibers together you are going to get the spinal nerve if you will bundle all these nerve fiber together you are going to get the spinal nerve here here is here is two kind of fiber always in the spinal nerve so spinal nerve is sensory in nature or motor in nature mixed mixed so all the spinal nerves which is 31 pair are mixed in nature are you able to understand this thing where i have told you pseudo unipolar ganglia uh, nerve fiber at that place only i have told you dorsal root in the dorsal root ganglion dorsal root ganglion is the part of dorsal root which is swollen in the dorsal swelling in the dorsal root that is known as dorsal root ganglion yes or no it is made up of pseudo unipolar pseudo unipolar neurons agreed tell me dear yes sir everyone no issues no issues no issues sir so what sir is communicants ramus communicants is a nerve fiber that is going for autonomic nervous system okay autonomic sympathetic 
Yes or no? That is known as ramus communicans. Yes. Can you observe this thing? Please draw it. I'm coming back in a minute. Done, everyone?
Are we done, dear? Just a minute, sir. Uh, so could you just repeat what uh, Ramus communicants is again? Ramus communicants is a motor nerve for autonomic nervous system. Yes or no? Yes, got it. Yeah. Just a minute, dear. My screen reading has stopped.
just a minute here. Due to some reason, it is not getting started. I'm again starting it. Am I audible to you? Done, everyone? Agreed? Let's see. Yes, now, next thing is reflex action. What is reflex action, dear? It is your sudden response to any noxious stimuli. Your sudden response to any noxious stimuli. It is protective and usually processed at spinal cord. I have written usually, not always. It may be processed or it may go to the brain also. That kind of reflex is known as cranial reflex. But cranial reflex is usually very slow in nature. So where protection of your body is required, the action should be very fast. Yes or no? The action should be very fast. Yes or no? So now, this is a spinal cord. Just see. Here is a receptor. From receptor, our friend fiber is going. Yes or no? Now see. Here. How many kind of things are happening? Then, see, can you imagine a single neuron is secreting two kind of neurotransmitter? Can it happen? Can it happen? See, dear, the thing is, when you are getting some noxious stimuli like this, if you are getting some noxious stimuli like this, okay, and you are trying to withdraw your hand, one muscle is going to contract, but one muscle is going to contract. Another muscle has to relax. Yes or no? Then only movement at joint can happen. Just try to think about your, uh, you can say, uh, hand only. Elbow joint. If I have to take my hand away, in that case, biceps has to contract and triceps has to relax. Yes or no? Then only a genuine movement can occur. Agreed, dear? Yes. Sir. Tell me. No issues? So, here, our friend fiber is there. It is taking, see, one, one synapse is over here. Getting my point? And that synapse, you can observe, it is direct with this red fiber. Yes or no? Direct. Agreed, everybody? Yes. And here, you can observe an orange color neuron. One synapse is over here, another is over here. So how many synapses are there? How many synapses are there? So two. There are two, more than one. So this 
a small orange color structure is known as interneuron okay this pathway will come and will lead to contraction the effector one this muscle and this pathway will come and will act on effector two to relax means one pathway is excitatory another pathway pathway is inhibitory agreed dear yes sir one pathway is excitatory another pathway is in inhibitory agreed dear so what can you think the excitatory pathway is monosynaptic or or polysynaptic excitatory pathway only one synapse is there in excitatory pathway na dear yes sir so it is monosynaptic in inhibitory pathway getting my point in either of the pathway either it is excitatory or inhibitory one pathway will have interneuron at least one pathway will have interneuron both can have yes or no done yes. here yes. so reflex pathway consists of a receptor a afferent fiber a interneuron a efferent fiber and a effector this is known as a reflex pathway which is not essential it can be there it cannot be there it is interneuron you see it is missing in excitatory pathway but it is there in inhibitory pathway so it is conditional agreed everyone yes then draw this diagram i am just coming back done everyone the reflex pathway is done am i audible yes. yes sir but just a minute
So could you just zoom in on the diagram? Are we done? Yes, sir. Yes, you can write reflex pathway. So could you just show what the glycine and uh, acetylcholine thing you've written is? Like where they're released? Yes, I'm going to let you know. Yes, sir. Just a minute.
done sir done now see types of reflex arc it can be monosynaptic it can be polysynaptic i think again the screen mirroring has stopped i don't know why this is happening in the later part of the class usually do not happen just a minute here. let's see types of reflex arc types of reflex arc monosynaptic and polysynaptic as i have told you if only one synapse is there in the pathway means interneuron is absent the direct synapse between afferent fiber and efferent fiber that is known as monosynaptic reflex arc and if interneuron is there that is known as polysynaptic reflex arc yes or no getting my point one more thing is there one is conditioned reflex another is unconditioned reflex conditions conditioned what happened there was a scientist ian pavlov what has he done what has he done pavlov has done he has he has you can say a dog was there before giving that dog the food you can say pavlov used to ring the bell pavlov used to ring the bell yes or no pavlov used to ring the bell done dear done yes sir what he observed after some time even if the food is not given even just after ringing the bell Dog, you can say dog has starts salivating based on that there are two kind of reflex one is unconditioned one is conditioned unconditioned is in this previous exposure is not required like knee jerk reflex or if you are going to touch anything harmful you will withdraw your hand but salivation after seeing a tasty food that is conditioned reflex because if you have not tasted the food earlier you are not Going to salivate much, yes or no? So this is there. You can write down. excuse me sir mm -hmm. so uh, in conditioned reflex is there any uh, case where conditioned reflex case and unconditioned reflex what is there what a case is... yes is there a case where, where? A, a conditioned reflex can inhibit or uh, dominate one no actually conditioned reflex are not of that kind getting my point many things try to understand my point many things are there like you are going to uh, have something noxious like fire is there some chemical is there you will feel the pain but for all the reflex you are not going to feel the pain suddenly or that can be pleasant also getting my point that can be pleasant also so without knowing that thing how you are going to how your body is going to react 
Tell me. Yes. Understood. Yes. Unconditioned is because that is absolute. That is objective. That is not subjective. It is present all the time. Yes. Got it. Excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. So, is conditioned reflex and uh, Pavlovian reflex the same? Yes. Actually, Ian Pavlov was the scientist who has, getting a point, who has done uh, all so these experiments. So, so both of them are different names for the same reflex, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Got it. Name of the scientist was Ian Pavlov. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Done, sir. Done. So that is about the reflex action. Now we will talk about sense organ. We will talk about sensory organ. Let's see, dear, what happens? What is your, uh, you can say, what is your uh, receptors are? What are the receptors? What is the function of the receptors? It converts one form of energy into another form of energy. Yes or no? It converts one form of energy into another form of energy. Done here? Yes, sir. It converts one form of energy into another form of energy. What happens? You people have a little bit of idea about mechanism of hearing. Because see, all your, you can say, everything, all your senses are going to be processed inside the brain only. Agreed? All your senses are going to be processed inside the brain only. Yes or no? Then, all your senses are going to be processed inside the brain only. Then, dear? Yes, sir. It is processed inside your brain only, every time. So, what will happen? What will happen? Any energy that is coming, that has to be converted into what? That has to be converted inside, uh, converted into electrical energy, na? Because on nerves, on neurons. Conduction of electrical energy is possible only. Agreed? Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. So what receptor do? 
any energy is coming receptor is converting that energy into electrical energy agreed so that is acting as a transducer in physics you may, may have heard about transducer it converts one form of energy into another form of energy yes or no like in ear rubbing of hair cells against tectorial membrane is there means mechanical rubbing is there means mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy yes or no yes sir yes inside your eyes inside your eyes what happens the light energy is converted into electrical energy inside your uh, in your tongue the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy agreed yes sir done done yes sir so so if chemical energy is converted into electrical energy that will be known as chemo receptor then yes sir agreed everyone now see here is classification of sense organs one is extero receptor one is proprio receptor and one is visero receptor extero receptor is the external sense organ which perceive our environment which perceive our environment proprio receptor they are present in joints tendons skeletal muscles and visero receptor is present internally done so these are this this classification is based on the location agreed done yes sir everyone just a second sir Uh, so so muscle cramps are perceived by proprio receptors right yes muscle cramps actually it is there to perceive your uh, you can say um, uh, it is there to perceive your uh, position okay where you, whether you are standing you are sitting wh whatever kind of things are there that is going to be perceived by your muscles yes Agreed? got it then now i am means proprio receptors joint movement everything that you are doing yes yes Let's see. 
according to a stimulus they receive okay receptors are mechano receptor as i have already told you mechano receptor means what it is converting mechanical energy into electrical energy and what all kind of mechanic mechanical energy can be there let's see getting my point here tango receptor bisner's corpuscles merkel's disc and pacinian corpuscles are there phono receptors organ of cotai steto receptor it is prista and macula algesi receptor it is free nerve ending proprio receptor it is responsible for position of the body it is golgi mojoni organ rio receptor it is a lateral line system you know fishes are like this the whole body is covered by non living plastic like scales yes or no yes sir yes sir so if nothing will be there na this lateral this is lateral line system okay lateral line system if it, this will not be there what will happen this will not be able to fish will not be able to perceive anything in the water perceive anything in the water agreed will not be able to perceive anything in the water so it is the sensory organ of the fish agreed dear yes sir now isos this is lateral line system in fishes that lateral lateral line system is going to have neuromast cells neuromast cells that you people can remember okay then photoreceptor can be there it is there for light it is the retina the chemoreceptor your olfactory receptor for smell and gastroreceptor for taste and one is thermoreceptor these two are there and bulb of cross and refinis organ that is there okay you people can write down these things rest we will be discussing in the next class i think by that time it will be over you all can write down done just a minute
Answer. None. Sir? Yes. So, what are the examples for the thermoreceptors, sir? Thermoreceptors and bulb of cross and Raphne's organ are the name. And bulb of cross and Raphne's organs are the name. Yes, sir. Done, everyone? Just a second. Answer. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, I hope, hope you people have understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank rest you, sir. Will, yes, rest we will discuss in the next class. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.